in small terms. When I think about what some people can do, even with their problems and shortcomings of one sort or another, if they have somebody that believes in them. I had a friend sit across me years ago and he says, do you have somebody who believes in you? And I said, well, yeah, Jesus believes in me. He said, yeah, but do you have a friend who really believes in you? I said, well, I hope so. But do you know so? And I had to search my card catalog of friends and think about somebody who really believed me and believed in me and encouraged me to be all I could be. And I started to think about that. And some of the people that were very quick to belittle me, make me feel badly, and not badly because they were telling me the truth, and say, no, you won't be able to do that. One of the first tent meetings I ever did, one of my pastor friends said to me, don't bother doing a tent meeting. Nobody's going to come. And besides, you'll go broke. And I said to him, well, thanks very much. The devil's been telling me the same thing, so I don't really need you to repeat that. <laughs> And we didn't go broke, and people did come. Amen. Always acknowledge a, foil, a fault. This will throw those in authority off their guard and give you an opportunity to commit more. <laughs> Whenever you find you are on the side of the majority, it's time to pause and reflect. Okay. Often the less there is to justly justify a traditional custom, the harder it is to get rid of it. Nothing so needs reforming as other people's habits. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I think that's true. There's a whole lot of other things I could read here. Do not put off until tomorrow what can be put off until <laughs> day after tomorrow just as well. Oh. Under certain circumstances, urgent circumstances, desperate circumstances, profanity provides a relief denied even in prayer. Oh. I'm not sure I got that one, but yeah, we'll think about it. Much as we coined the word left media, how about this one? Polaganda. If you pay attention to the polls, you're going to get polaganda. Oh, yeah. And polaganda is an incurable disease. Did you know that? Yeah, it's incurable. So as we're thinking about the things here in Scripture we're looking at, and I remind you basically of our theme from the beginning. Truth and its consequences. It's just like saying, what does that cost if I want that? What's it going to cost me? And then you say, oh, that's too much. I don't want to pay that. Well, how much does it cost to tell the truth about Jesus? In some countries of the world right now, it means your life. Oh, yeah. Not your freedom. Your very physical life. You have to think in our beloved country, who would have ever expected this country, our founding fathers, and I wear this t-shirt representing the founding fathers and mothers at Plymouth Colony, Half the women died on the ship, so there were very few women left. Those 50 people who remained after the first winter, not a single one of them got back on the Mayflower to go back to England <laughs> to more safety and a better, supposedly better life. They stayed, and from them are many millions of people, like I don't know, between 33 and 38 million people descended from those 50 in Plymouth, and they're all mm -hmm. over the world. Now, that is some multiplication, folks. Amen. And if you go there and you go to the Forefathers Monument, the Pilgrim Mother Monument, and Brewster Gardens, and you see that actually uh, William Bradford on his memorial has Hebrew on it. He was a great scholar of Hebrew, even though it was pretty hard to learn it in those days. There's actually Hebrew letters on his uh, burial obelisk. And it basically says, praise to Jehovah. Amen. All praise to Jehovah, that's what it means. Yeah. And when you look at what they did, 
they thought they were starting a new Jerusalem of God. Now, you might disagree with their theology, their prophecy, or whatever, but they're the ones that believe that any Republican form of government was predicated on the consent of the governed. Can you imagine that? Tell somebody in government today, by the way, I don't consent. You can't do that to me, I don't consent. And our government is built on consent, right. not tyranny and force. So, think about some of those things. And a basic message here also, that slavery is universal. It was basically universal and had nothing to do with race, or I shouldn't say race, because we're all the same race, we're all the human race. Just different flavors and colors, you know. But slavery was across the world. Indians kept slaves, American Indians kept slaves, the Crows kept the Sioux, the Sioux kept the Shoshone, whatever. The Romans, they kept slaves from Greece, from Africa, or from wherever, they didn't care. Africans captured and sold other Africans into slavery. But the slavery that is endemic worldwide, and particularly runs rampant in America, is the slavery of sin. And that is a debt that nobody can pay. It's more than 33 trillion. We can't pay that one either. <laughs> Only Jesus can pay that debt. And so I, I close with this. Many of us have gone through a variety of different sufferings and sorrows. A man named Bayless Benjamin McKinney penned the words of the hymn, Have Faith in God, in 1934. Now, 1934, if I remember correctly, was not a good year economically. He said this. These are the words of the song. Have faith in God, though all else fall about you. Have faith in God, he provides for his own. He cannot fail, though all the kingdoms shall perish. He rules. He reigns upon his throne. Have faith in God, he's on his throne. Have faith in God, he watches over his own. He cannot fail, he must prevail. Have faith in God, have faith in God. Amen. That's some pretty good words, don't you think? Now, surely, it's not only likely that you're going to suffer in this lifetime. Anybody here hasn't suffered at all? Anybody have some suffered? I was going to say, I got a whole bunch to share of suffering. Can I share some of my suffering with you? <laughs> Any takers? Oh, okay. <laughs> so suffering is not only likely in this life, it's guaranteed. None of us welcomes it, but all of us will undergo it to some degree. But Jesus... The man of sorrows, acquainted with grief, is there in the midst of all our troubles. He's not some far away, uncaring God, but the supremely compassionate one who gives us his grace to bear all things. Now, I could back that up by numerous scriptures. And certainly we know the scripture that tells us Jesus cares for you, like in the song. It's so personal, and every time I cannot hear a song like our brother did up here without shedding tears because I take it so very personally. He's not talking about somebody else. He's talking about me. Jesus cares for you. And so every one of you here tonight, well, it's almost night anyway. <laughs> Jesus cares for you. You haven't been alone in your suffering. Though so maybe your friends have deserted you. Family has deserted you. People don't even want to hear about it anymore. Maybe you've had so much suffering in your life. Most people said, look, 
I'm just burned out on hearing about your suffering. <laughs> and you maybe have to just only bring it to Jesus. But you never burn out Jesus. Amen. And Amen. He understands Amen. the suffering. Yes, he does. <laughs> and that is what we need to be telling people because I can't promise you what's going to happen in the future. Some people maybe can do a better job than, that I, than I can. I can just tell you, um, no country has ever lasted forever, but Jesus always will. Because Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. And that is scripture. It is in Hebrews chapter 13. Mm -hmm. Verses 7 and 9 tells us those things, and I find great comfort in that in the midst of whatever's going on. Whatever it is. It's kind of interesting when you look out here on the road, you've got a road sign, eight goes south that way, 23 goes east that way. That could be a little confusing. Am I supposed to go south or am I supposed to go east? I don't know. But Jesus knows the direction that you're going. And if you love him and you serve him like he told the Children of Abraham, if you abide in my word and my word abides in you, I know the direction you're going. And it's a good direction. Amen. And everybody should want that. And the people yes. that tell you they don't, I guess they really don't understand, do they? That's right. But you're going to help them. Let's pray. Thank you. Lord, what a great blessing. To be able to declare before everybody, we'll have no other king but King Amen. Jesus. Amen. But Jesus is the only way, the only truth, the only life. And though many people have messed it up in trying to explain it, still the truth exists. You are the truth. You don't just have truth. You are the truth. And knowing you means we know the truth. Hello, I know the truth. Amen. You do? Yes, his name is Jesus. Would you like to meet him? Thank you, Father. All the sorrows that people are going through. We know people have died. People have gotten sick. They've had accidents, loss of jobs, loss of income, loss of homes. We, we, we suffer with those that suffer. We just don't look and say, gee, that's too bad that they're suffering. We have compassion for them, and we want to help, and we want to pray. And for everyone here tonight, I pray the blessing of Holy Spirit courage upon you in your life more than you've ever had before. I you have the courage to speak the truth and speak it firmly, lovingly but firmly, just as it is, straight, unadulterated, just the way Jesus would speak it. He wants to use you and speak through you. Did our brother want to come back and do a song? Amen. That would be a real blessing to you. Yes. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs>